We were finally on to one of our last projects before departing. I was most excited for this project because for the first time ever, we were doing something simply because it would make us feel good and increase morale. What we didn't see coming was that installing vinyl around the curved parts of the boat proved to be difficult and that a normal staple gun wasn't shooting the staples we needed it to. So we had to use a compressor, which would inevitably drain our batteries. In the spring of 2022, we bought a 1980 Downeaster Cutter that was neglected for a decade. We sailed her up north to her new home port on the central coast of California, did a major haul out, and prepped her for blue water cruising. This life is completely new to us, but the dream is far from it. And finally, we see it within reach. For the first time ever, we've moved on to Mundial and are continuing to ready her before we set sail. Thanks for joining us as we acquire our sea legs and say goodbye to land life. <laughs> More gravity, pull it. Do you want to do up here first? Mm. Let's keep doing the bottom this way. to the hardware store and our storage, aka Grant's parents' house, we have decided to use a pneumatic gun. And it's drawing quite a few amps right now. It's like 75 amps, which actually isn't as bad as the um, our hot water kettle electric one. So that's good. And so we're gonna try to quickly finish this part. If only we knew it'd be, it would have been this hard to install new vinyl. I don't know if we would have gone this route, but I'm sure at the end we'll say it wasn't that bad, but right, right now it's like, ugh. Grant ordered vinyl online, the best deal he could find, and it came in one big bundle weighing 50 pounds. It was hard to imagine that we were going to get through all this vinyl on our cabin top. We stapled foam on the curved parts of the cabin top first, and then went back over with the vinyl. Once the vinyl was stapled up, we took a utility knife and closely cut along the staples to remove the excess vinyl before stapling on the HITM material, which would cover up the staples. And now to the port side. We hadn't removed the old foam and vinyl yet since it was hard enough at times living in what felt like a construction site with just half the cabin top vinyl down. So I got to removing the old vinyl and foam, removing staples to prep to install the new material. Good morning. Good morning. Is this the port off? So we're going to just back feet, we're going to catch that over there, and then we're going to run a new wire over here. We talked about running wire so that we could install a new galley light and a nav light that was also a three-way switch, and I could turn red for night sailing. So as I removed the material, Grant got to wiring. Grant's already stapling up the foam. We spent all day prepping. We had to rewire some lights. We added that light. Um, I cleaned our bronze, sorry it's so loud, bronze porthole, took out all the staples, and now it's time to install. Very excited about this project. We started this project on a Wednesday and didn't finish until the following Sunday. A quick project in the grand scheme of things, 
but it still felt like we had been in the boat putting up vinyl for too many days. Keeping it light and goofy helped a lot. Now it is. Hey babe, take a peek at the camera. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> Am I the vinyl queen? <laughs> the vinyl queen. <laughs> Thank you for the hat, babe. I love it. You're welcome. What? <laughs> <laughs> no. Wait, let's put the collar down. <laughs> Betty Crocker? The furring strips that we ripped were used to wrap the vinyl around at curved and arched areas of the cabin top so that we would have something to shoot into with the staples. Grant's working on the first corner of one of the ceiling pieces and I think it's starting to look like a sailboat. But we're not done yet. It's about to go up the mast probably like half a dozen times today because we got our upper shrouds that we're putting up and so trying to make him a hearty breakfast here's mine and he's requested this those were five cents each <laughs> tricks my price for a calorie is way 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 better than yours <laughs> yeah right tricks it's sugar for breakfast <laughs> Last week's episode, we completed measuring and splicing our shrouds, and it was time to install them and finally finish redoing our rigging. As Grant hoisted himself and the shroud, I made sure the rest of the shroud was following him up the mast nicely. This was the last project we needed done before we could do some shakedown sails. Oh my god. Grant is just extended like horizontal, parallel with the spreaders right now. Man, now that I know how hard it is to do that, I'm like, I have a lot of more respect for riggers. Some good news this morning was that Grant was able to get the two plates off and then also the whipping that we did around the um, new shroud makes it fit perfectly through the spreaders. Which is a relief, because we weren't sure if we were going to have to take right, off well, that. I gotta go to the hardware store and get some longer bolts. Oh shoot. I jinxed it. I said all good news this morning. That's alright. Off to the hardware store. And I am working on rebedding the forward handrails. Grant made new tracks for the companion way weeks ago when we noticed the wood was rotten and split. So we bought some white oak, the most affordable hardwood we could find, and replicated the tracks. We decided to go with beetle this time for install. I think I'm gonna need you to sit your booty up there. You can do that. So, that I am good at. <laughs> so we're keeping this touching the end of this touching that. We don't have any C clamps, do we? Yeah, I don't think they're big enough anyways. Tools don't like salt water. See this one? Sure. 
I'm not. Oh. You're full of That's the first layer of glass. Oh, wow. There's the second layer of glass. With the price of wood plugs these days, I opted to purchase a plug cutter instead, which would save us money in the long run. Grant cut plugs while I countersunk the holes to prepare for them. Okay. Busy day on Mundial. Grant's finishing up the upper shrouds. Uh, he got half of it done yesterday and then it got pretty windy. And so he's gonna finish it up this morning. We almost finished these track slides for the companionway, but um, we stopped at the very end because we realized that this has been sliding. You can even see the marks. So I'm gonna take this off and just kind of um, shimmy down a little piece from here to here so it doesn't slide anymore using the flapper disc. So that's what I'm up to this morning. And hopefully we will finish the rigging today. Rebuilding the companionway door was something on our original list, but after going over projects, we decided it wasn't something to get done before we set sail. The tracks, however, needed to be re rebed since they leaked, and the door was sliding on the fiberglass cabin top every time we opened it, so this was the opportune moment to fix it. Last leg, but easier than making a new one at the moment. New future project. Not every day you start and finish a project in one afternoon, but this happened with the companionway door and the tracks, so we were excited. To celebrate, I went for a surf, and on the way back, Grant asked me to check on Mundial's growth on her bottom while I was in a wetsuit. Hey. Here we go. We gotta grab our snow girl and goggles. Let's see how dirty she is. Go by feel. She's got a little fuzz on her. Ash only rides. <laughs> No swimming. <laughs> she thinks she's the queen. <laughs> <laughs> Just got dressed after surfing and doing a quick bottom clean or bottom check. Now we're going to head to the dock and get ready to take her out tomorrow. We're excited. <laughs> It had been too long to count since the last time we sailed. Grant and I have been putting in nine hour workdays to ready Mundial for her departure, that we barely made time to actually sail her. Also redoing the rigging and waiting on parts in the mail to make the shroud had been preventing us from taking her out. But tomorrow was the day and we were excited. And I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little nervous. So much was put into redoing the rigging and I just wanted it all to go well. We grabbed our new to us spinnaker and our friend Reed and his dog Ellie who were in town and got the boat ready. Grant and Reed worked on the rigging and completed our new lashings for the new shrouds while I stowed things and tidied up the cabin to get us ready to day sail.
At a 40 degree heading, we were going 5.8 knots with 7 knots of true wind and 7.9 knots of apparent wind. Full sails and full smiles. The main point of the day was to get our feet wet and practice things that Grant and I haven't done yet, like reef. We only just installed reefing lines on Mundial because our last main didn't have reef points. We also brought this binnaker. Well, technically, it's a jinnaker. Hoping to fly her and downwind for the first time, but also not getting our hopes up. After today, we felt ready. Ready to leave the harbor, the nest to spread our wings. The place that had been my home the last 10 years and grants for forever. One more project kept us back, and that was fixing the wind vane and mounting to the transom of Mundial. And then we were planning to set sail. Thanks for watching. And if you like our videos, support us on Patreon. See you next week.